because I want to go back to the post first. This was posted by uh, an Israelite sister. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read uh, the meme. Uh, it's a comment. It says, I've seen many women who were abused sexually disconnected with their bodies and end up just being over-sexual. I'm not dissing the whole movement, but sometimes we need to understand where things stem from. Sometimes it's hurt looking for temporary healing. Um, and again, it's, ta it's talking about hypersexuality after sexual abuse, saying that it's not talked about enough. Um, now, the sealed portion says... Um, this is when the the multitude gathered to try to stone Mary Madeline for being a whore, right? Okay. Hold right. on, hold on. And I'm just going to start in the middle of it, okay? Okay, that's right. I'm start at verse 25, and I think this is chapter 54. Okay. All right. And Mary marveled that Yahusha knew knew her name. And when she looked into his eyes, he smiled upon her. And Mary was instantly drawn to Yahusha, for the Father had opened her mind that she knew him and believed in him. And she said, No man is left that has condemned me, Lord. And Yahusha said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee for that which these men have done unto you, but I condemn them. Go now and sin no more. And when Yahusha had said these things unto her, Mary fell at his feet and wept upon them that he would forgive her for all that she had done. And Yahusha knelt down before Mary and lifted her to his breast and wiped away her tears and comforted her. And Mary looked again into the eyes of her Savior and felt his exceedingly love for her, his exceeding love for her. And Yahusha smiled upon her and wept upon her neck. For he knew that she would be with him in the kingdom of his father forever. <clears throat> but these things he could not tell unto Mary at this time, because he was already married to Martha. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip, because this is not the part I want to really read. I want to focus on something here. Hold on. Um, okay. Now I'm and then I'm skipping to verse 30 and now I am Aroni would ask of you who now have the truth regarding that which occurred between Yahusha and Mary Magdalene. Yeah, do you not see why those who brought forth the accounts of these unto you in the Bible excluded these things? Why do you see why they would not want the people to know that the eternal wife of the Son of the Most High, even our Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, was a woman who they would consider the lowliest and the most vile of all the women among them. And hold on. Okay, and in this, I'm going to the next verse, verse 31. And in this, there was similitude given by the Father, so that all of you should know that the love that he has for all of his children, more especially for those of his children who had chosen to be women in mortality, for he cherishes the women and knoweth that only in them can a man be like unto him. And what say ye of the latter days of those women among you who are forced by by no want of their own to do that which Mary was forced to do to service. Now what say ye of them? For they are more precious before the Most High than you who were professed to be of the Most High. And when Yahushua cometh in all the glory of the Father unto you of the latter days, he shall have Mary at his side, and ye shall look upon her as his eternal wife. Then what shall ye say unto her, knowing that which she was forced to do during the days of her probation? Will you look upon her as ye look upon those among you who do in their probation what she 
she was forced to do in hers because of the wickedness of the lust of men, I say unto you that in that day shall all those who ye call whores and prostitutes, yeah, even all those who have abused their bodies because of the lust of men, in that day they shall rejoice and fall down and worship Yahusha, and he shall call them forth and embrace them and forgive them and exalt them above those of you who have abased them all the days of their lives, and they shall be received of him, while ye who have judged them shall be rejected by him. Therefore repent of the judgments that ye have rendered unto these, and embrace them and lift them up and give unto them that of which they are in need and that they and that they need not do that which is abominable both to them and to their father who loveth all of his children and judges none of them who are forced to sin because of the wickedness of others now what do you think of that? So she basically, she was forced to, into doing what she was doing. Exactly, like the women of today that are doing, that are on stripping poles and that are prostituting their bodies. They're doing it out of, some of them did it out of necessity and others are doing it because men have forced them into it. Right, right. Prostitution pimping. This is because of the wickedness of men. I agree. But yet men want to open their mouth and speak against these women. Right. As if, as if it's all their fault. Yeah, because that was not, that's not important, and I'm not 100 percent for sure that he that he was. I mean, I kind of think that he was married, but I, that's all irrelevant. I, I literally stick to what's important. No, no, I was just wondering what the, what that, that particular scripture was saying about was he married to to Mary that he couldn't talk to to. I mean, he was married to Martha. He, he was married see. to supposedly three, according to the sealed portion. Martha and two Marys. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Which, which would make sense, right? So, right. according to the sealed portion, um, he was polygamous. However, you say that word, but he didn't choose any of them. They chose him, and him being righteous, he accepted their choice to choose him because he's righteous, and they wanted a righteous husband, so he obliged them with that but in the eternal kingdom he can only have one and that one is Mary Magdalene now this is according to the sealed portion okay gotcha okay right right and okay so that's where the polit it's called polygyny polygyny came into yeah. practice with multiple wives like King David and Jacob all of them had multiple wives I was wondering where the multiple wives came in and then if that would be allowed in the kingdom I didn't know how that would work no that makes Multiple wives is not allowed in the kingdom at all. That's what I, that's what I thought. So the celestial spirits, um, the female celestial spirit can choose a male celestial spirit um, to, to be that, that there'll be a mate for eternity. You know, it's the female that chooses, not the male. In this society, the male chooses. But is in the actuality supposed to be the woman's choice? Really? Because I always yes. have been shown in the books that the male, in the book of Sirach, it says a man must choose his wife. Yeah. It says a man must choose his wife carefully, but a woman must choose any man, which is like that. That didn't make any sense to me. Exactly, you know I mean? bro. Because there's been a lot of manipulation of the scriptures, so um, it makes more sense to me, and it lines up. Um, because the woman is the weaker vessel, she would have the choice on who she would want to pick as a righteous husband. 
with her being so a weaker what, vessel. What if the husband doesn't want that particular woman? I'm just saying, like, he would probably choose her, knowing that it's it's a good it's a good mate. Well, like the father designed the the way the father designed uh, the female uh, was for the female to choose her her righteous husband. Um, but in today's society, we have been conditioned that is the man's choice. Right, right. Yeah, I wonder why that got twisted at along the way. That's crazy. So that would make sense. Yahushua would have been her covering exactly. the teacher. And then in going into the kingdom, she, now how, what would happen with those other two wives? Where do they go? They either if they're if they make it to the celestial kingdom, they can choose for themselves a, a mate for their eternal partner. That's only in the celestial kingdom, though. Many, the majority, are not going to the celestial kingdom. That's only for the elect few. Right, they're going to the terrestrial. On the yeah, a lot, a lot of them are going to ter terrestrial or telestrial kingdom and the terrestrial which one is that that's like the middle kingdom it's yeah that's the one the where you're selfish so if you're selfish you're basically being terrestrial so that's most of my family most of my family would be in a terrestrial kingdom because that's where their mindset is at you know or terrestrial some of them will probably be terrestrial you know um, right. those that are holy, I don't, I don't really see my family being holy wicked, but my, my dad, he basically has the mark of the beast. My whole family pretty much has the mark of the beast in their forehead. They're chasing after the gain of this world, you know? So right. it's like, I, I'm completely opposite of that. So therefore I'm an outcast of my family. They can't understand me. They can't understand the fact of why I'm, I'm impoverished. You know, they, they can't understand the fact of, well, why can't you make a success out of your life? Because I was chosen by the Father to be a willing vessel for the spirit of truth to operate through. And I never would have had the mindset to seek him if I had been prosperous. If the things that I did of my own will, my own accord, and or according to this world, go to school, get a job, and be successful, if I had been able to do that, if the Father allowed that to happen in my life, then I never would have came to the realization that I was meant for a different purpose. And that purpose was to be a willing vessel for the spirit of truth to operate through and for his glory to shine shine through right that makes sense no i agree i i chased money for years being on the road and stuff and now i'm not doing that like i used to you know i would have just been another mindless zombie you know <laughs> Right, 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 and right. and that wasn't my path. So, of course, I've lived an impoverished life, but it was for a reason. It was also to keep me humble. It was also to make me compassionate to where I understand what it's like to want and need for things. I understand what it's like to be in a destitute situation and have nobody want to help you. Have family turn their back on you. I know what it's like to be homeless. I know what it's like to be hungry. So therefore, when I do come into wealth, when I do come into money, I will be a blessing unto those that are in need. Right, exactly. I will never be a hoarder because I know what it's like and I have a heart of compassion. Yeah, I'm like you. I, I've always been that way. I've always, you know, and I'm, I'm very similar to you, very similar, you know. Yeah. Oh, I think all, our only difference is we live about a thousand miles apart, basically. <laughs> you you know? know, if you uh, if you knew my life, man, you would literally. Most people would not be able to live my life, bro. I I sleep on a broken bed, bro. I'm gonna. I am about to take a picture of this shit. You you need to see this shit, bro. Be not 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 that I'm asking for your help, but I just want you to know the reality of thing of things that I'm talking about. You know because I'm not full of shit. Like I'm a real one. I'm a motherfucking real one. 
So, you know, I'm going to show you this um, to show you that I'm a real one. Hold on. I want you to see this because this is absolutely horrible. Now, I've done what I can to, like, try to makeshift it, you know, to try to not, <laughs> because my back and shit, you know, so I try, I keep it, uh, I try to keep it stuffed with stuff, you know, so that it can somewhat give me, you know, um, support, but for the most part, it's uncomfortable as hell, it's a big ass freaking hole, a big ass dip in my bed, you know, when I was freaking damn near 400 pounds, um, it put a crater in my freaking bed, and I have not been able to afford a bed, you know, so I, I don't even have furniture, I have no couch, you know, I, my abode is very humble, I come from destitution, okay, so, and I never, like I said, I never would have heard the voice of the, of the, of the good shepherd if, if I hadn't have been in these destitute situations, I would never have cried out to him. You know, if if my life was comfortable. So, it's just what it is, you know. It's for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And my, my life is to be a blessing unto all nations upon the face of the earth. And the Father is going to show His power through my life. And how, how He's going to do that, I have no earthly idea. Yeah. The way it looks from for now, um, hell, when I go on my channel, bro, there's barely any traffic on it. So sometimes, you know, I have to try to force myself to not get dis discouraged, you know, because I know that the Father is with me. And whenever those feelings of discouragement cre creeps up, the Father is right there telling me to just, you know, be patient and continue to do what He's telling me to do. And in His timing, His people, the ones that He leads to my channel is going to be the ones that flock to it. And because I'm not I'm not looking for, you know, glory and fame of this world. I just I want people to be saved, you know, so that that's my motivation for putting it out there is that I want to save as many as possible. Right, right, of course. And it's hard to uh, I, I'm like you, I get frustrated with people that don't want to listen. At least I'm used to like taking in information and say, okay, let me process what I've learned or what I've been taught and let me double check it. Versus the modern day Christian mentality or Torah Nazi, they can never change what they've been taught, what they've been taught, you know? It leads to arguments and disputes and, you know. Yeah, I'm going to have to find that portion. You said that was chapter 54. You're reading, right? I'm going to read that. I'm going to try to send you this picture right quick. I couldn't really get that good of a picture because it's hard to freaking lift that mattress. No, that's okay. I get it. I understand. You don't understand. I get it. You know, that, the whole, I'm going to read that portion at some point online. I don't have it in front of me. I don't have a book. It's a little blurry. Somebody lives, you know. It's a little blurry, but that's under the mattress. It's a big ass crater. You can't really see it that well, but that's that's the best picture that I can get trying to lift that thing. Yeah, so bro, I, I pray to the Father a lot, you know, not to mention my computer, you know, tripping and freaking mouse getting stuck. And it's just, 
You know, and I tell my dad, I told my dad this, you know, like, he, but he'd rather, you know, buy me a couple of pair of jeans. I'm like, i much rather have a bed. i much rather have, you know, a computer because, you know, a computer is where I'm doing the work for the kingdom and work, you know, streaming for my income. You know, hell, that that's more important to me than clothing, you know, <laughs> making sure I can pay my rent and, you know, shit like that. You know, shit, I'd rather have that. I don't care that my clothes is falling off of me. And I still got a long ways to go anyway. But I was surprised that um, I could fit into a size 48. And not only could I fit into it, but the damn things were still hella baggy on me. It surprised the shit out of me. I'm like, well, damn, I, bro, I was wearing a size 60. And then a size 56. And then a size 50. And now I can fit most likely a size 46 and it'd be, you know, comfortable. Yeah. But it's the father that's literally working in my life and I'm seeing the fruit produced. You know, as far as my outer package, even my, you know, this weight dropping off of me, you know, and, and him packing me full of this word. You know, there's no doubt about it that the spirit is with me. There's so many people on Facebook teaching, especially in the Hebrew community. It's 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 kind of like perplexing. So many what in the Hebrew community? That are out there teaching. I mean, I I can't I, I can't see how they're all being called to be teachers. They're not, bro. They, this is wolves and sheep's clothing that's been the scripture that make him twofold the child of hell. Like, what scripture is that? Yeah, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. This is what this is what has ro risen up in the earth today. This is Matthew twenty five fifteen. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him more twofold the child of hell than yourselves. Wow. This is exactly what has risen up. This is why you have a whole Hebrew community that's risen up calling themselves teachers. This is exactly what the scripture is talking about. Woe unto you blind guides which say whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing but whosoever shall swear by gold of the temple he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind for whatever is greater the gold or the temple that sacrifices the gold. See and it just goes on and on and on. Ye fools ye blind they are blind bro they, their conscience is seared with a hot iron roll unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites strain at a net and swallow a camel wow crazy yeah, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup. You gotta wear my fringes. You got your fringes. You can't wear. You gotta wear your metri. You gotta wear your metri. You gotta take off your. You gotta have your head uncovered. You when if you're a man, and you gotta have your head covered if you're a woman. You make clean of the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and access. Thou blind Pharisee. Cleanse yeah. first that which is within the cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. See, that's what's happening to me. I have cleansed the inside, and therefore the outside is being cleansed. The weight loss is the outside being cleansed. By way of the Spirit. Is completely contrary to what these brews are doing. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, yeah, I, I see them standing there with their fringes while they're teaching Paul. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like repulsive. And that's why I kind of just fell back with that new group that I was rolling with for the past month or two. I just kind of like kept it myself. You know? 
Yes, exactly. This is Matthew chapter 23. This is these this, these brews right here. This is the judgment that's against them. You know, this this is this is them. Wow. I just I'm just thinking out loud. That's just mind boggling. Like you sit there, you know, they they, they want to like eye you up like if you're wearing fringes, which I don't wear fringes. Like I thought that was a a, a commandment of men in order to. I don't know. I I, I just. Did, did that commandment say, does say Yahuwah? Do what? Is that fringes a command of Yahuwah or a commandment of men? That's a commandment of men. And many of them brews that are wearing fringes are wicked as hell. They ain't changed their heart. They have not changed their mindset. That means they are freaking cleansing the outside of the cup and ignoring that which is within. Exactly what that scripture is talking about. Got it. I mean, because I, I, I kind of like, you know, I just not my thing to, to put the fringes on. I often wonder. I didn't think it was like scriptural, but I just didn't have the understanding. It's of, scriptural. Like, why? Yeah. It's scriptural, and it was for a reason. It was to remind us to keep the commandments of the Father. But people are wearing them fringes, and they're still not keeping the commandments of their Father, even to to this day. They're not keeping the commandments of the Father. They're keeping their own commandments. They're keeping their own laws. They're still not obeying the eternal law of the Creator, which is love. Yeah, I think somebody mentioned to me a couple years ago. I can't remember how it was said. It was like that basically was sent to Yashrael because of, of their disobedience to like to remind them, hey, look, keep the commands. So here you got to hang this on your shirt. To, to let them know to keep them when you should be doing it naturally. Exactly. It's so, <laughs> but it's so crystal clear to me. You know, it's, it's either. I mean, everybody has free will. Everybody has free agency. We cannot force people. You know, to choose the. the you know, the way of of the Father. I have chosen for myself and in my life to follow after the Father and be led by the Spirit of Truth. And I've dedicated my life to the truth of the Father. Um, but that's me. Everybody else got to choose for themselves. Whether you, you want to serve the, the power of love and life or you want to serve the God of death and destruction. There is no in-between. Everybody's going to make a choice whether they want to or not. By their actions, they make their choice. How they live their life in this mortality is making their choice. Like, there's a lot of different things in, like, that uh, Brother Selah talking about in the, uh, the, 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 the uh, Owaski Bible talking about... Um, them coming, you know, people. It's, it's almost like it's a they get re they get re. Uh, what's the word? They re brought back in and get taught again, like another way. It's, it's, it's strange. I know. I, I mean, it's possibly. I mean, I'm just going by whatever common sense. If the father doesn't want anybody to come to uh, eternal damnation, like. Does he try and recycle them back in? They say, okay, you messed it up once on this earth, but why would he rejudge them and then let them come back in? I don't get it. I mean, I have to No, kind of because, because um, you, you can only prove yourself in mortality. You can only prove who you, who you truly are in mortality. So you, you have to go through the probation. This is probation. Life on this earth is probation. This is how we this is how we prove where we belong when we graduate in the spirit, okay? Our physical death is spiritual graduation. 
All right. So when you, your mortal body dies, you graduate into the spiritual. And and what, however you lived your life upon this earth, immortality during your probation, that will determine where you belong upon your graduation. You cannot live your life wickedly and expect to live your expect to graduate in some spiritual paradise. No, you're going to live out the the outcome the, the what you what you sowed, you're going to reap. And the things that you did not reap in mortality, you're going to reap them in the spiritual until you're purged. You know, and, and however long that is, that's for the creator to determine. You know, I have no idea what it would be for who it will be for. You know, that that's his judgment to make. And, you know, how long? Yeah, if you're, like, looking to, seeking the Father your whole life, and, you know, you're basically proving to him, hey, look, I'm willing to, to not eat flesh, follow your laws, love people. You're showing him by your actions in a fleshly desire of world that you're willing to like set aside those earthly things and pleasures for the kingdom exactly and if you can do that and truly love your neighbor as you do yourself and and you know don't do unto others anything that you wouldn't want done unto you you're you're selfless you give you give way more um, you help others way more than than you help yourself, than you than you than you take for yourself. Then you belong in a celestial kingdom. If you actually live your life like that, those that are actually living their lives like that upon this earth, they're celestial kingdom, bro. And there are very few and far between, because the majority of the people are either going to be a terrestrial or telestrial kingdom, not celestial. Right. Now, the difference between the terrestrial and the terrestrial, what's the difference in those two? Um, the terrestrial one, you're pretty much wholly wicked. Um, you're evil, you're a murderer, you're a liar, a backbiter, um, coveted is. Um, you just do the most wicked, vile things, you know, upon the earth. You know, like that's the lowest of the kingdoms. That's the lowest, that's the lowest that you can go. Um, and then the telestrial one is above that. That's if you're pretty much a good moral person, um, but you're selfish. You don't really give, you know, to the poor. You hoard. Um, you don't really want to help nobody. You're pretty much selfish. You only want to do things for yourself, and you can pretty much care can care less about your neighbor. Um, they belong in a telestrial kingdom. So, like the the terrestrial with the with the wicked, is that like a? an area on the earth where they're kind of going to be in fighting for all their days eventually like another earth set up where they're going to argue and fight or they're going to be able to be that, purged that's the spirit the realm bro that's the unseen realm like there are so many of these spirits upon the earth and we can't see them you know disembodied spirits from their people talk about ghosts you know familiar spirits and, and all of that yeah, um yeah, yeah. yeah they're they're upon yeah like so i'm still studying this you know because i always thought that once you die you go to a place but from what i'm reading in the sealed portion and what i've read in the owaspi um when you die you're you're in the spiritual realm upon the earth all right. So, and and but you're you're at a higher frequency. So those that are mortals, we can't see you. We can't see these spirit beings. Okay, we can't see them because they're at a higher dimension. They're 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 in the spiritual dimension, and we can't see into the spiritual dimension. We can only see into the phys physical, the carnal. You know, this physical life, and we can't we can't see past that unless they. Um, we're able to zone, uh, tone down their frequency to the point to where we can see them, which is paranormal activity. Right, right. Because like, I, I was wondering, like, when you read the book of Sheol and Paradise in the in the in the sixty six books, you're thinking, okay, like that's. Then you read other stuff, like um, in the stuck in the Ezra seven, mm -hmm. where it talks about like. The yeah. habitations after the dead. Exactly. So yeah, I read that, and so like when I'm reading these other things, like, but 
the I didn't know nothing about the different kingdoms either. I didn't when I read that in Ezra, I had nothing, no idea. I never read about the celestial king, kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, or the terrestrial kingdom. Um, but from reading that, it seems to me that the terrestrial kingdom would be the earth, but on a spiritual level, um, higher frequency. Um, like when men, when people die in war. You know, the sealed portion talks about um, what happens when they die in war, you know, and the turmoil that they go through. Um, their spirit is not taken away. They, they, they come to a spiritual awakening upon the earth, you know, um, but this spiritual life is way different than your mortality life. Like you think about a certain place, you can just appear there, you know, teleportation. You can do that in the right. spiritual realm, you know. Right, right. So, it's so just all these people that are, that are dying in war and say they go over there and they're they're dying for Ukraine or Russia or for America mm -hmm. or whatever war. Like whether they believe it or they were forced to go because they just obeyed their government. Like they get killed in a war. Are they going to continue fighting like a in a warring? No. In that, when they die, when they die in war, they they are awakened to the reality of what happened, and they see that they they are, they're immediately enlightened about the deception and how they were deceived into losing their lives. This is what the what sealed about portion talks about. The children of Yashrael that fought amongst themselves and fought with the Canaanites and the Moabites, the same situation, no different, right? Well, no, war is war, and all yeah, war is from yeah, Satan. Yeah. Um, none, none of the, see, and and there's a lot of lies in the Bible about the Israelites and you know, um, you know, war against the Canaanites. All that what didn't come from the Father. That came from a false god. That came from no, the no, god no, of I war. I agree. I agree. I'm just saying, but that was a war nonetheless. Right? right. Yes. Yes. There were many wars. Oh yeah, definitely. But the they lie on the Creator. They lie on the Messiah, and they blaspheme their name to high heaven and they have been yeah. doing this you know so the father is all love and he never sanctioned the death of any of his creatures any of his beings he did not sanction war the messiah is not for war the messiah is not coming back to wage war the wicked is going to take out the wicked sowing and reap we're in the age of sowing and reaping and during the times of the gentiles they have not got to reap any of the uh, they haven't got to reap none of the atrocious things that they have done to the to, to the people um all of this time for hundreds of years the raping robbing work murdering stealing killing destroying lying about everything now all of a sudden, the Father has raised up his people to speak the truth to the world so that those that have the ears to hear can be spared. Right now, the truth is being spoken. For hundreds of years, they didn't have any opposition. There was no truth being spoken because his spirit was off the earth. His spirit just came back to the earth in like 2019. So in 2019... Um, was everybody knew that black people are the Israelites. Now they want to act like they don't know, but they freaking know. They're just ignoring the elephant that then busted through the wall. Right, right. And now we're in the in the days where judgment is coming, and the judgment that's coming is the judgment that's been due, that's due to the Gentiles that have not got to, to be judged for the things that they've done. Now, they, a lot of them want to ignore this. They want to ignore this and say that all we got to do is repent and say Jesus, and we're going to be raptured. But that's oh, no, not the case. That. That's a lie. That's a deception. Jesus, <laughs> that's a deception. And many are going to perish because they're holding on to white Jesus. They seriously think that white Jesus is coming to rapture them away from all of the judgment that's coming upon the earth. There is eternal laws in effect. And right. the people are not being told the truth. 
people are being lullabied to sleep and they can't even see that we're so close to the end. We're so close to the fact that the, the wicked is about to be removed from the earth. The wicked is going to, t just like in the days of Noah, how the Nephilim, how the, the, the clash of the titans, they tell you the truth in the movies, yeah. they took yeah, out one another. The Nephilim killed each other. Yes, and that's exactly. exactly what's going to happen. You hear wars and rumors of wars, nuclear explosions, but guess who's going to be preserved? The children of the Most High. Exactly. I hope I'm one of them. I want to be one of them. That's why I've been doing my part, you know, telling, waking people up, doing my best to follow his commands and tell, tell other nations who his people are. Not only that, the destroyer is coming. They call it many things. Planet Nibiru, the destroyer, whatever people want to call it. But it's a fearful constellation that Ezra talks about, and it makes his rounds every so often. And in the book of the, I think it's the Colburn Bible. I did a video on this. Um, okay. um, it's, it's the Colburn Bible, but it talks about the destroyer that is due. And it gives the prophecies on like, what what is the state of humanity what will be going on in the days of the destroyer making its appearance we are literally living in those days okay we're living it i did the video on it so if you're curious about it check out that video it's called the destroyer and the first video was plagues have come upon the whole earth the second video is called the destroyer it's in the playlist it's two videos i got you okay People don't so people understand like, how close we are to the end. So people like me, like the father that shows mercy on a guy like me because I've been trying to do my part, you know, and yeah. accepting truth and teaching it best I can. As long as, you, as long as you're living it because the, the yeah. Messiah cannot stand hypocrites. So you can't be teaching these things if you're not living it. Right, no, yeah, I do my best. I'm not out there in the world anymore I, mean, I, I don't go anywhere other than working with my cousin and I haven't been working with her the past 10 days so we had an argument so I've kind of been keeping it to myself for now you know and, you know I'm not out there at the bars and whoring around and doing stuff you know what I mean yeah. you know I shouldn't have said hates, but despises. Well, I guess that's the same thing but the, those that are hypocrites are going to get the harshest judgment right those that are judgmental and those are your hypocrites your hypocrites are the most judgmental critical people upon the face of the earth yeah that's why i always try like if i have an argument with somebody i try and like make up right away and say hey look i didn't mean it you know or or we both got a guy out of hand you know what i mean i've always been one to like even if i wasn't at fault still say i'm sorry yeah same here Cause I'm of humble heart. Like um, a prime example is on Dimitri's video. <clears throat> um, Elder Dimitri had did a video a while back, and I think it was a it was a Q and A. I did a video on this too, um, because I just I felt like I was wrongfully accused. Okay, um, <clears throat> people jumped to a conclusion that I was being judgmental. And um, condemning the brother, but not one time did I ever condemn the brother. But I was, con I was, I was, I was. Um, they they basically said, and I could feel the hatred um, from several of the members in the chat. I'm not gonna say any names, but I could feel <laughs> hatred coming from them in you know some of their comments that they would say, you know, like, and how they they were actually reacting to my comments to this guy. It was literally righteous indignation that had rose up in me because he was um, going to go get these preconditioned scriptures going against what Elder Dimitri was bringing as far as pertaining to our diet. OK, um, he was going to Paul and he was getting uh, okay. all these. Yeah, okay. now, I, now I recognize he's the elder Hebrew with the 
with the locks and are pulled back into a ponytail. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Elder Dimitri? Is it Dimitri? Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's Dimitri. I think I'm on his Facebook page. Friends well, too. He, Go ahead. Sorry. He had uh, since cut his hair, um, so but yeah, so he don't have long locks no more. He still got the long beard though. Um, yeah, but, yeah, I meant, I meant the beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay, so go ahead, right, Paul. Go ahead. Right. So he, no, he he was bring he he was breaking down the scripture. Um, the elder Demetri was breaking down the scripture, talking about how you know it, it was against the father to eat flesh and blood, and how he never gave it. Well, this particular person in the chat um, was controlled by demons. Okay. Um, and he went to go get these preconditioned scriptures of Paul and we was putting it in the chat. So the oh, okay. righteous indignation rose up within me and I basically called out that spirit that was controlling him. And I said how he was blaspheming against the one that he said that he loves. Like how he's blaspheming against the Father and against the Messiah when he proclaimed that the Messiah ate meat. And so it wasn't just Paul that he was going to. He was going to other scriptures talking about the Messiah ate meat, the Messiah fed the multitude fish and this and that. So it was the right his indignation that rose up in me against the blasphemies against my father and against my big brother Yahushua HaMashiach and so I let that be known in the chat and it got mistaken for being in judgment of the brother because not one time did I judge the brother I, I said the truth in which he was blaspheming against the father and how can you say that you love the father and that you love the Messiah when you blaspheme their name even when you do it in ignorance you're you're doing these things in ignorance because I knew that it was a it was the demons within him that was causing him to do this and All anyway right. Um, I, I basically was put down on that video and Elder seemed to get upset at me and um, it was just not a good day you know I ended up I ended up apologizing still yet because it was Elder's video um, and I didn't mean to bring any contention but at the same time I call out you know evil when I see it you know, and I knew you should have said that you were trying to give him some other precepts. Could be people like that brother that just text me. It was right back to the Paul when Yahushua fed him fish. I'm like, well, there's a lot of things that say that he probably fed them bread and and fruit, and we've been lied to. Yeah, you know? it was barley. It was six barley loaves and like clusters of grapes. So yes, it was no, it was, and how the hell are you going to have fish in the middle of the desert? They were in the desert like all day. So where are you going to find fish at in the desert? So he's well, going to pull two well, dead fish out of his my, pocket. <laughs> my thing would have been if he had dead fish, like do they eat sushi? Is he going to have them go cook it now? Are they going to find lead, uh, twigs and all strike up a fire, 5,000 people and cook it off? Or is he making it ready to eat? Here's bread. You can just break it off and eat it. Same as a grape. No exactly. Different. It doesn't talk nothing about how they prepared it or anything, you know. And then and then when it talks about gathering the baskets, it doesn't say anything about scraps of fish. It talks about the scraps of bread. But, ever, again, everybody's pre pre condition to believe what that word was fish was put right in there i fell for it but then i have also have asked more questions over the past three or four years not just stay with oh it's fish okay well was it really fish no you know did they eat sushi did they, was it like <laughs> fish that was on the bone they have to gut it skin it and prepare it how did they eat it did he have like you know a, fillet, a a McDonald's quarter pounder fillet of fish already set up and on a bun ready to go? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people don't ask the next questions. If you hand me grapes or you hand me some bread, I don't have to prepare it. It's done. It's already break it off, eat it. Exactly. But somewhere the lying pens put that word fish in there, mm -hmm. and people would just run to it and don't want to ever like look into it like because that scripture i read I, to you remember that scripture I, I gave to you that scripture let us mix good with evil 
So what was your first question? Remember that scripture I gave to you that talked yeah. about let us mix good with evil? Yeah. There it is right there. I, it, it tells you right there. I don't know exactly where I, where that scripture. Right. I don't know what book it was in, or even what chapter. But no, it's no, clearly it right there. It. Yeah, and it tells us it. It gives us precepts, you know, to things that we can find in the so-called holy but, Bible. Here's the thing: like, there's no other place that. Okay, well, if they're going to quote the one verse. Or Yahusha fed them bread and fish. Give me words, the second witness. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is there a second or third witness to say, hey, okay, the multitude were fed loaves of fish and bread? But I can give you several, bread. I can give you several witnesses that it was fruit. And it, now several different places say different types of fruit, but all these, don't, it don't say nothing about no fish. So I can sh I can line up precept upon precept of three different sources at least that will that will state fruit and bread, not no freaking fish. Personally, I'd rather have the fruit. Fruit is amazing. It's juicy. It's wet. They're probably parched, so you don't want to be eating something that's salty and dry. Exactly. And you want to eat something that's fruity. It's water is in the vegetables. Exactly. In the it was definitely like there's one there's one record that I think stated watermelon. I think that was the scene you um the scene gospel of Yahusha Hamashiach and then another one proclaimed it was grapes uh, and barley loaves. That was um the gospel of the Holy Twelve. And then there's another one that I can't think of off the top of my head. Um but there's several there's several different sources that I've read that I can I can find by the leading of the spirit that will you know line up with what the father said in the beginning of what was to be our food what what is our source of food and nutrients is that which grows from the earth uh. Yeah this is good going again uh but hey, bro, let me go ahead and try to get to because I hadn't even started this video yet. I just okay. basically. Um, I'll be around. Yeah, I'll be here. All right, all my right. bro. Sounds good. Um, it was nice chatting with you today, though. Yeah, always nice chat. Yeah, chat soon, okay? All right, Shalom. bro. Shalom. Shalom. Wow. Eleven, eleven. Wow. Eleven, eleven. As soon as I looked at my phone to like hang up with the brother. Okay, let me go ahead and stop this now. <laughs>